class we're going to discuss driving safety, how safe are the roads, driving injuries on or off duty, unsafe acts behind the wheel, driving under the influence, road rage, unsafe conditions, vehicle safety features, and did you know? The source of these figures is the 2014 Accident Facts, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The 2015 fatality estimate is up 8.1% from the same period last year, and the fatality rate rose by 4.4%. The NHTSA experts caution that while posture gear estimates are more volatile and subject to revision, the estimated increase represents a troubling departure from the general downward trend. Safe acts behind the wheel. Driving at an unsafe speed is the most common error in fatal accidents. Distracted driving accounted for 10% of all crash fatalities, killing 3,179 people in 2014. Drowsy driving accounted for 2.6% of all crash fatalities. At least 846 people died in these crashes in 2014. Per the National Safety Council, 30% of all traffic fatalities in 2014 were caused by speeding. Do you want me to answer these when I get them finished? What should you do? No. We hope today's activities will demonstrate just how dangerous distracted driving truly is. The fact is, we are all guilty of driving distracted and putting ourselves and others at risk when we're on the road. Kind of crazy when you think about it. Drivers who use handheld devices are four times more likely to be involved in crashes serious enough to cause injury. Texting while driving makes you 23 times more likely to crash than driving undistracted. It scares me, actually. Um... You know, everyone's tried it every once in a while. Oh, I got a text message, let me check it out. And then, you know, the moment I look down, I look back up, I'm like, oh my God, I could have just died. You know what I mean? So you're like, you just get, it just, why put yourself through that stressful situation? There was a lot of techniques that I was doing that I see that uh, really isn't the best technique to be driving, especially when you throw in a couple of distractions. I normally, and I'm not gonna lie, I am a, uh, uh, I do, pick up on text sometimes when people text me. I, I thought I was good at that, but I learned in this course that really I'm not as good as I thought I was is actually looking at my texts while I'm driving. It, it is a distraction uh, when you have other things coming your way. Who am I to say, yes, I am responsible for your life. Do whatever you want, you know? That, I'm not gonna have that on me. Are you kidding me? I'm a medic. My whole job in the army is to prevent people from, you know, so, why would I encourage that outside of my job? I take my job very serious. I, mm -mm, I don't want to deal with that. That's too much. I didn't sleep well the night before, so I was already pretty exhausted when I woke up for PT that morning. And I worked a full day, and my first sergeant reminded me that I had staff duty. By the time I finished, I'd worked like 27 hours. I knew that I probably shouldn't drive. I just wanted to get home, go to bed. You know those little memorials on the side of the road? I hope they put one up for me. Distracted driving, the most hazardous environment. For most of us, whether on or off duty, it is on the road, faced daily by millions. This accident picture was a manager beginning a business trip, was driving from his house to the airport on the freeway. He was also shaving while driving and looking into the rearview mirror. In his peripheral, he saw something cut in front of him. His reaction, he steered to the right, driving off the freeway and hitting a tree. The result of the accident was a broken hip. Road rage. Road rage is driving under the influence of too much anger. What causes road rage? Being provoked by feeling endangered by someone else's driving, another driver cuts you off or tailgates you, 
Resentment at being forced to slow down, righteous indignation at someone who breaks traffic rules, or anger at someone for taking out their road rage on you. Therapy for road rage. Take a deep breath, just let it go, relax. Driving under the influence, DUI. The source of the NHTSA drunk driving crisis continued to represent roughly one-third of fatalities, resulting in 9,967 deaths in 2014. Under the influence of alcohol, drugs, or over-the-counter and prescription. According to the National Safety Council, the one biggest cause of fatalities on the road in 2014 was alcohol, 30.8%. How many fall activities include celebrating with friends, tailgating, seasonal events, holidays? So you must be thinking after all the commercials, lectures, and safety briefings on drinking and driving, hasn't everything that could be said about it been said? Guess not. You have the right to remain silent. Drinking and driving. We can't say enough. Know what's right. Do what's right. Vehicle safety features, daytime running lights, headlights that are on whenever the vehicle is running, lap and shoulder safety belts. Reduce the risk of moderate to fatal injuries by approximately 50%. Nearly half, 49% of passenger vehicle occupants killed were not wearing seat belts in 2014. Airbag for driver and passenger. Combined with lap and shoulder belts, they reduce the risk of fatality by another 10%. Also in vehicle safety features are side impact airbags and anti-lock brakes. Click it or ticket. Hawaii state law, click it or ticket, is an effort to have motorists and passengers better protect themselves in the event of a motor vehicle crash. Police statewide continue their efforts to issue citations to those violating the state seatbelt and child passenger restraint laws. The cost of a ticket for not buckling up is $102 on Oahu, Maui, and Hawaii, and $112 on Kauai. Hawaii's universal seatbelt law requires that all front and back seat motor vehicle occupants buckle up. Adults and children must use their seat belts and child restraints at all times. The child passenger restraint law requires children under 4 years of age to ride in a child safety seat and children between the ages of 4 and 8 to ride in either a child safety seat or a booster seat. Violators of this law are required to attend a 4 hour class and may be assessed a fine between $100 and $500 depending on the number of offenses. This is Michael. Today he's going to hit his girlfriend so hard she ends up with permanent brain damage. in this vehicle. Girl is critical. They say the guy without the seatbelt did the damage. No seatbelt, no excuse. With the temperature dropping the farther north you drive, all we can say is be careful. The roads will be slick as we watch this front move across the state. Hey right, then. Everybody buckle up securely, huh? You too? Well, we got a long way to go and who knows what we'll get hit with. In black ice, damaged roads, blizzard conditions, unseen objects in the road, you know? <laughs> the usual stuff. But hey, you trust me.
Makes you think, doesn't it? Would you really drive out in the winter weather with such precious cargo and not check the conditions along the way? What do you mean all the usual stuff? What are you, nuts? Imagine priceless treasure is riding with you, and then ask, is this trip necessary? If so, what can I expect along the way? For their sake. Know the signs, know what's right, do what's right. Here are some traffic safety performance core outcome measures for Hawaii for 20, 2006 to 2014. Unsafe conditions, poor visibility, nighttime driving, fatality rates per mile are four times higher at night, dust storms, rainstorms, windshield wipers not effective, poor road conditions, slippery surfaces from weather, and road not properly maintained, improper vehicle maintenance, inadequate brakes, worn tread on tires, Hoses and belts, inadequate acceleration, and headlights out. Did you know, when driving on a road that is new to you, your eyes tend to scan the road from left to right, which is an excellent driving habit. We tend not to scan when in familiar territory. How closely can you safely follow another car? Use the two to four second rule in between cars. Motorcycle safety. Taking a minute to look over the AR 385 10, Chapter 11, Paragraph 11 7 5, talking about motorcycle training. POV operations, motorcycle, potential risk, aggressive motorcycle operation, speed, misuse of high performance bike, failure to maintain proper position in lane or adequate following distance, limited detection by other motorists, potential result, degradation of combat power due to accidental injury and or death, mitigating measures, leader engagement raises awareness through NCOPD risk sessions, leader counseling for riders, Identify high risk riders, enforce the use of proper PPE, insulation or state motorcycle safety training, verify proper training, licensing, registration, insurance, and condition of motorcycle. Crash prevention components. Preventing crashes before they occur is a key component of a motorcycle safety program. Crash prevention programs focus on four areas. Education programs to teach riders the basic knowledge and skills needed to safely operate a motorcycle on the streets and highways. Properly licensed motorcycle operators. That can, be, that can demonstrate basic knowledge of riding and can safely perform basic handling skills. Reducing alcohol and other drug involvement in motorcycling. Awareness activities to reach motorists who share the road with motorcyclists. Operators of other vehicles must be knowledgeable of the special characteristics of motorcycles and must use this knowledge to interact safely with these vehicles. Here are some statistics 
from 2010 to 2014 of Hawaii motorcyclist fatalities per 100,000 of registered motorcycles. Hawaii motorcycle fatalities by age. Injury prevention components. Despite the best prevention efforts, motorcycle crashes do occur. The majority of the crashes with other vehicles are not the motorcyclist's fault. During a crash, the most important factor in reducing injury is personal protection for the motorcyclist. Clothing. Long sleeve and trousers resist abrasion and protect against sunburn, windburn, dehydration, and hypothermia. Light colors or reflectivity increases a rider's visibility. Eye and face protection saves face. Any rider who has been hit in the face by stones, insects, or debris can tell you the benefits. Footwear. Boots provide protection against foot and ankle injuries. They also provide a good grip on foot pegs and road surfaces when you put your foot down. Gloves keep hands comfortable, functional, and protected. They come in an infinite variety for all seasons and weather. Helmet. This is the most important piece of protective gear a rider can wear. It protects against head injury, wind blast, cold, and flying objects. Full face helmet is recommended. Reflective vest and sash must be worn when riding on post in the States and at all times when riding in Hawaii. Take a quick minute to look over this brief BY Stay Alive Wear Your PPE from the CRC. Helmets. Helmeted riders have up to a 73% lower fatality rate than unhelmeted riders. Helmeted riders have up to an 85% reduced incidence of severe, serious, and critical injuries than non-helmeted riders. Motorcycle helmets are 67% more effective in preventing brain injury. Unhelmeted motorcyclists are over three times as likely to suffer a brain injury as were those who were helmeted. Only of a helmet. This only works if you wear it. Braking. The use of both brakes together will invariably slow you down more quickly than using just one of them. The use of both brakes together results in a less weight transfer than does using just the front one, assuming equal total braking force applied. Use of both brakes tends to lengthen the life of your front brakes. If you need to stop or slow down on a slick or gravel surfaces, the rear brake is just a ticket in combination with a very gentle hand on the front one. If you are going less than 20 miles per hour, then both brakes are effective and relatively safe. In very slow maneuvers, use the use of the rear brake alone often provides added stability and control of your motorcycle. Stopping distance factors. It has been well documented that it takes the average person almost one full second to recognize and then react to an unexpected threat. About a half a second if the threat is anticipated. The two second rule, in other words, provides one full second of distance between bikes in order to provide sufficient time for following bikers to recognize and react to unexpected threats. If all bikers in the group have roughly equivalent skills, then no matter what the driver ahead of you does, so long as he remains in control of his bike, you should be able to do the same without running into him. This is true whether you are on a wet or dry pavement and regardless of any pavement slope you are on. However, the bike ahead of you is not the only thing that you might have to avoid from hitting. Going downhill or riding a wet surface dramatically increases your stopping distance and is important should you have to avoid an obstacle in the road. Example, a pothole or another vehicle. 
since your tire traction is cut by as much as two-thirds on wet roads clearly you should increase the following distances substantially over what is safe on dry level roads. Similarly, sand or gravel covered roadways should cause you to stretch out those following distances. Since gravity either aids or detracts from the ability of your brakes to stop your bike based on whether you are on an incline or a decline, following distances must be significantly increased to maintain the safety margin in you're riding downhill, and the steeper the slope, the wider those distances should be. When riding in a curve, most motorcyclists choose their own line and certainly should not be required to stay in their track, though they should stay in their lane. In this case, the distances between bikes should be nearly double when riding twisties. The two second rule. The two second rule means that in a staggered formation there is one second spacing between each bike, thus a two second spacing between bikes in the same track. The two second rule should constitute your fundamental safety margin while riding in a group if you use it as a minimum spacing distance. Note, this does not mean it is impossible to hit the guy ahead of you if he loses control of his bike. Excessive tire wear, seven causes of cupping. There are at least seven causes of cupping and or uneven wear in the front tire other than tire air pressure. Most roads are banked away from the center. If you ride vertical, the side of your tire closest to the center of the road wears more. Your tires scuff when you force a speed change with them. The rear tire scuffs when you accelerate and when you brake. And every time you ride in a direction other than straight ahead. While alignment is not usually a problem with motorcycles, it can be. Carrying an unevenly divided load, example, all your tools or jumper cables, etc. in one saddlebag, can result in you riding the bike other than vertical most of the time. Setting your track for anti-dive unequally can easily cause uneven tire wear. If one of your front shocks is defective, you will experience uneven tire wear. Excessive use of the front brakes will result in excessive cupping. As a motorcycle rider, you're 30 times more likely to die in a crash than someone riding in a car. And of those accidents, 35% of them were caused by the motorcyclist riding too fast. Riding. Are you ready or not? Remember, be safe, wear the proper tire, wear your helmet, use good driving techniques, braking and stopping distance, be aware of excessive wear on your tires, and don't speed.